Hello, this is Hans van der Kwast, Senior Lecturer at IHE Delft Institute for Water Education. In this video I will show you how to use the data from the Water Productivity Portal of the FAO, WAPOR, in QGIS using the OGC Web Services. In another video I will show you how to use that QGIS project in the field on a mobile app called the Input App. Let's first look at WAPOR. You can find Vapor using the link vapor.apps.fao.org and note that there are multiple versions. We are looking here at uh, version 2.0 and that there is also three levels, 250 meter, 100 meter and 30 meter uh, data. Uh, 250 meter is available for the whole continent of Africa, 100 meter for uh, certain countries. And there's the subnational 30 meter level products uh, for certain uh, selected study areas. And we're going to use the Beka in Lebanon. So here I choose it. And here I can see uh, the data. And to know what data is available, I can click here on the catalog. Make sure that Beka is uh, selected here, if that's your study area. And here I find the data sets that we can uh, use. And if I'm going to the field, I might be interested in the actual evapotranspiration and interception of the last uh, month. So uh, if I click on this, I see here uh, the different months that I can see. And you can, of course, download uh, the data. Uh, or see it on the map, or use an OGC link. In this video I'm going to present how to use the OGC uh, web services. And I would like to use that web service for October 2019. If I go here to additional information, I find metadata. And that's very important. It gives us the, the projection of the data and it gives us the conversion factor, which is really important. So I need to multiply the downloaded data by 0 0.1. And it will give us in millimeter per day the actual evapotranspiration and interception, the sum for the month. You can see the data on the map. And if I go back to catalog, make sure you have here Beka, it switches back to uh, Avash. And uh, I'll go back where I was. Here I can click the OGC link. This link points to a server where this data uh, can be downloaded from using the OGC services. We recognize here the WMS web map service. So I'm going to copy this link. And in QGIS, I can... Uh, the services using this button and I create a new one and I call it FAO Vapor and I just paste the link here and when I do connect I find here all the data sets I'll just close it here because here in the browser We can now also find FAO Vapor. And here we find the list of uh, the data. And um, we are interested here in the BK. And I find here the monthly actual evapotranspiration and interception. Let's go to the properties. And it gives us a lot of uh, information here. It shows a little bit strange information too. so. We have to be a bit careful. It gives a projection of EPSG 2000, which is not very familiar for this area. But um, if I look at the file name, it gives Vapor version 2. And it shows here that it's uh, the Beka AETI product of 2019. Month 10, so 1910 means 2019 month 10. 
So uh, I, I'll just load this. I can simply drag this file to the right. And then it will load. And um, just to check if we're on the right spot on the globe, I'm going to add from the Quick Map Services plugin the OpenStreetMap standard. If you don't have this plugin, you can uh, install it from the plugins menu. Um, there's other videos that I previously recorded where you can see how to do the settings. And here we see that we are uh, in the right spot in Lebanon. And this is the area that we're going to prepare. Now a WMS is a web map service. It's an OGC standard which basically generates a picture, a PNG in this case, from the raster data. However, often we want to control a bit more how we see this raster data. We want to, we want to do calculations with it. So a WMS is nice as a picture to quickly uh, view, but we can already see that the contrast in the legend, for example, is, uh, is not so good here. And we can improve it if we really have access to the raster data. Now there's a little hack that we can do. So if we go back, we can also add a WCS, a web coverage service, which basically gives us access to the real raster data. So I can uh, add a new one here, call it also FAO Vapor. And I paste here the URL, but I'm going to change this to WCS. And basically, that will find also the layers, but now in a real raster format that we can use. So here it is. And here we see the, the whole list. Uh, it will also be added here to the browser panel. So instead of going here to WMS where we were, we can also go to the WCS here. And here we find our recently added FEO Vapor. And there we can also find the Beka Lebanon monthly data. Now I'm going to drag this one there. So it will be loaded from the internet. The difference with the WMS is that the WCS really has the raster data. That we can also save as a geotiff. And we have more control on it. And therefore we already see this. Um, there is a, by convention a no data value of minus 9999, which was also given on the site if we look at the additional information. And we need to multiply also the values by 0 0.1. So what I'm going to do, first I'm going to change this web layer into uh, a geotiff. So if I click right, I can do export, save as, and I'll go to a folder that I prepared, Vapor Survey. I'm going to save here, and it's 2019 month 10. Save. What we have to do is to change here the no data values. I'm going to add here minus nine minus nine 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 and then uh, when I do OK it will save it in the right format so it will download all the pixels and there it is and we can remove this web layer So now we need to correct the values by multiplying with 0 0.1. So I do that in the raster calculator times 0 0.1. I'm going to save it. And I call it AETI underscore 1910 underscore corrected dot diff. And there we go. So now it's in the right units. I'll remove this layer and uh, I'm going to give it a similar color style as uh, this WMS but it will now use the minimum and maximum that it finds here in the file so I'm going to go to single band pseudo color but because it's a continuous raster the WMS uses a blue color ramp so I'm gonna do the same here blues so I'm gonna change it to blues and here we see it 
and we see that the contrast is much improved compared to the other one. We can uh, tune the things if we want, uh, choose another uh, mode, we can do a quantile for example, but let's for now keep it on uh, continuous. And what we can also do is compare the values to see if they are the same. So I select both, and I don't need this anymore. I'm going to use the identify tool here. I'm going to zoom in on some fields. So let's say for this field, identify all two. I can find here that in the WMS it's 822.0 and here is 82.2. So note that in the WMS the values are not converted. It shows the original values, but uh, it is in fact the same. Let's try a few other sites. This is a nice site. 688.67.8 It's a bit different, but not much. So I found uh, slight differences, and uh, I'm not sure uh, if that's caused by uh, reprojection or, or something, but uh, the differences are uh, are small and uh, certainly within the uh, error margin, so it's uh, it's close. So we can use this layer for uh, calculations, and um, that's basically how you use web coverage service from uh, Vapor. We can do that for any other of these layers. So let's do this for gross biomass water productivity. Same procedure. So I'm going to export it to a TIFF file. And set the no data value to minus 9999. And then we click OK. To convert it to real values, we need to check the conversion factor on the website. Note that this data la layer is not uh, disclosed via the web uh, for WAPOR 2.0, but we find similar information for WAPOR 1.1. And we see that we need to multiply it by 0 0.001. So I do raster, raster calculator times 0 0.001 and I can save it here to, and I can save it here to this file name. And there it is. And we can remove these other ones. And I'm going to change the colors. And what we see here is that they use it from red to green. So I can change here single band pseudo color. And this one goes from red to green. And uh, here you see it, but it's quite. Uh, equal, we don't see much uh, contrast, so I'm going to change that by using a quantile. And there we see that we can highlight the contrast uh, much better. So we can now also use this layer for calculations. So I'm going to remove this one. And I'm going to save the project. Because I'm going to use it later in the survey, in the input app, I'm going to save it in the old format. And I call this one Vapor Beka. In the next video I'm going to show you how to create an app using this data for surveying in the field.